Welcome to Aerospace Unplugged. I'm Adam Kress. Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining me on the podcast today. The issue we're going to tackle with my special guest today is runway safety. Airports across the U.S. and around the world are getting busier and busier. So what is being done to improve runway safety? That's what our guest today will help us understand. I'd like to welcome in Honeywell Aerospace Technologies President and CEO, Jim Courier. He's had a long career in aerospace, working with technologies that help improve flight safety. So welcome in, Jim. Hi, Adam. Nice to be here. Thank you. All right, Jim. So we've seen runway safety incidents and these incursions increase fairly significantly over the past year or so. So take us through, uh, what are the runway safety issues? What's actually happening that we need to address? So runway safety events happen when a pilot loses their situational awareness in and around the runway. And there's three categories that we look at when we talk about runway events that may occur. The first one being runway excursion. So this is when a, an aircraft is landing and or taking off and actually runs off the end of the runway. Mm -hmm. Then you have what we call wrong surface events. So this is when an aircraft on the runway but possibly they're on the wrong runway or possibly on a taxiway. Then the third event is actually a runway incursion. So this is when you have either an aircraft or a vehicle that may be on the runway at the wrong time while an aircraft is landing and or taking off. So there's basically the three categories that we look at when we talk about runway events. Okay, yeah, runways, like I said, getting busier and busier, so the, the likelihood of, of confusion is, is rising. Um, unfortunately, we also what happened in Japan um, early in January this year that resulted in the death of five people. Um, beyond that, we've seen an increase in close calls or these, these near misses on runways in recent years. So why are these types of incidents increasing? So to be very clear, first and foremost, you know, flying is the safest form of transportation, without a doubt. But now as we're coming out of COVID, a couple of things are happening. One, the volume of flights have been increasing dramatically. And at the same time, during COVID, we actually lost, a lot of people exited the marketplace. Pilots left the industry, air traffic controllers left the industry. And so now what we have is less experienced pilots, mm -hmm. less experienced air traffic controllers, now coupled with a high volume environment that we're working in. And the tra tragic incident that occurred in Japan, fundamentally what it does, it just underscores the need to introduce technology, more enhanced situational awareness for the pilot in the cockpit not only within our domestic markets that aircraft travel in today, but also internationally as well. Okay, so Honeywell has a, a long legacy of safety products in aviation and have, have had some of the breakthroughs that have helped save lives. Um, what are they doing in the area of runway safety? Are there products that exist, products that are coming? Both, we have products that exist today and what's forthcoming. If we think about what exists today, you know, we have our runway awareness advisory system, what we call RAS, and mm -hmm. from that span, spun off some products, smart, smart runway, smart landing, or generically speaking, what we would call smart X at the end of the day. And really what smart X does, it addresses the two primary areas I mentioned a moment ago in terms of those categories that we're referring to, whether we're talking about runway excursions and providing that enhanced timely notification to a pilot. Um, do you have a, a unstable approach coming into the airport? Is the aircraft not configured properly for landing when it's coming into the airport? Or as you're approaching the aircraft or the runway and or taking off, is the runway through calculations going to be too short, short for you to do that? And the second one is about the wrong surface events that may happen. So that's the second element that our, our um, smart X system helps take care of. And specifically around that, it's really providing that enhanced pilot situational awareness, the notifications as to what runway are they landing on? Um, what runway are they taxiing on, right? From two in that regard. So those provide you the two on the ground at the moment. The technology that we're developing now for the future is what we call our surface alert, or we call surf A. And that actually brings the technology into the cockpit. So if you think about it for a moment, today it is mandated that aircraft that are flying have ADSB systems on them, but that same sort of technology is not available on the ground to provide that situational awareness into the cockpit. That's what Surfay technology does. So as you are approaching a runway, it uses the GPS coordinates off the aircraft through automatically what's being broadcasted on ADSB runs it through computational models, it can actually provide indications to the pilot that there's the potential 
of a collision that's going to occur because it will identify an aircraft that's already in the runway, provide the computational analysis, and provides that added level of assurance and notification, and hence mm -hmm. advanced situational awareness to the pilot to take some commensurate action. Yeah, so it seems like that sort of that sort of system, surface alerts, um, w would you know it would it would work to give better eyes and ears to the pilot on the ground, right? You could see better around themselves because right now, correct me if I'm wrong, but they they're listening to ATC um, taxiway here, go runway left, hold short here, um, but they need to, other than what they can see out the front of the airplane, they have to trust what they're hearing from ATC. There's no backup system. That is correct. Correct. And so what this does is it actually brings that technology into the cockpit, right? So actually getting an oral warning, you know, that there's an imminent potential issue that's arising and or a visual cue on your display. So you get both of those happening yep. in, in, in accordance with, all, or I should say over and above what you've been hearing through air traffic control. Correct. So, there, you know, there's many layers of security um, and safety in aviation, and what we're talking about with surf A would add a new and important layer of security. Right, and as you think about safety in general, it's always about layering in more safety on top of safety on top of safety to get the most safe operating environment you can be within. Yeah, so is the industry looking at this as a whole? I know Honeywell is only one company within a big industry. Are you aware of other similar technologies out there? There are other technologies that are out there. No, we, we consider ourselves to be a leading provider of runway awareness type technology in the marketplace today, but there are other avionics providers out there that are providing solutions coupled with their ADSB capabilities that actually now enable other safety enhancements as well. Okay, so my understanding is that the FAA has been primarily focused on techno runway safety technologies that are ground-based in that um, rely on air traffic control. Uh, but can you tell us about those efforts and the solutions that we see there that may be existing compared with the, te the, um, the cockpit-based solution. Yeah, so that's what we would call airport surface technology that exists today. And it's actually been deployed. It's been deployed to approximately 35 different airports around the United States. And what that does, it does provide this sort of situational awareness that I'm mm -hmm. talking about, but it only provides it to air traffic control. So the air traffic controller is provided a warning of a potential incursion of an aircraft on the wrong, on the wrong one runway, but they have to then start doing the computational analysis themselves, right? Is there going to be an issue that's going to arise? And so it's that latency of getting that information into the cockpit for the pilot to have more situational awareness. That's the gap that we're trying to close because every second that we can provide an additional awareness of what's transpiring or the events that are transpiring just provides more enhanced capability to be able to take an evasive maneuver if required. And that technology today has been in place for some time, this surface detection yep. technology that I'm talking about. But the fact of the matter is, it's been at the expense of about $550 million for these 35 airports. There's over 400 more airports that need to get this technology deployed at. And if you think about the cost and the time to deploy this, it could be another decade before we see this technology and the expense, that taxpayer expense could be overwhelming. Yeah, so the FAA has no, um, no requirement, no mandate for cockpit-based runway safety technology, correct? That is correct, that okay. is correct. Now, be it now, I will, I will make mention. It's also worth noting that the NTSB back in 2000 actually provided a recommendation that not only providing this surface detection equipment in and around the airports to provide the awareness to air traffic control. They also required, or they actually asked that this technology be brought into the cockpit for that enhanced situational awareness, and that just hasn't been done yet. Okay, so um, the FAA then has has not directly acted on, on runway safety in some time. What do you think, uh, or, or have they? What, what are they doing? What are the next steps in potentially getting this technology either mandated or more widely adopted? The first thing they need to do is just incentivize providers and developers of this technology and the airlines to incorporate it. Mm -hmm. The technology that I'm talking about in terms of the Smart X technology and or ultimately Surf A technology. Mm -hmm. So incentivizing the industry to continue to develop this and to make it available just is going to increase that situational awareness in the cockpit for them. Okay. You mentioned the NTSB and the fact that they, they have 
um, you know, outwardly recommend recommended the implementation of this technology. They don't have the authority to enforce implementing it. Um, but what else have they said about what can be done, or what have pilots associations, what, you know, outside of the companies and the FAA involved? What is the rest of the aviation world kind of saying about this? So even just recently, this has become a topic up on the hill. So the NTSB chair Jennifer Hammondy mm -hmm. actually had come out and started indicating. That and, and actually getting on record and advocating that they need to include more of this runway awareness technology and more of this situational awareness to enhance safety into the cockpits. The second thing that I would say is from a pilot's perspective. So Captain Jason Ambrosi, who's actually the, the president of the Airline Pilots Association, as recently as November, actually was talking specifically around this particular topic talking about flight deck enhancements, increasing situational awareness for pilots, therefore enabling more safety to be brought into the industry. Mm -hmm. What do you think will eventually cause a shift to get more of this technology to be adopted? Do you think it comes from industry or from a new law? I, I mean, ultimately legislation, I think will come into play here a little bit, right? So providing additional resources, providing additional funding, um, to develop the technology and to incorporate te te the technology. So I think from a legislative standpoint, from a regulatory standpoint, both agencies need to take a very, very hard look at what's happening here and ensure that it becomes a priority across the industry. Okay. Well, you said it earlier, and it remains true, that flying is still by far the safest mode of Absolutely. transportation. As much as we've talked about runway incursions today and potential problems, um, it's valid because we do see them and the number is growing. But what do you think, what would your message be to, to everyday folks who are maybe learning about this issue and maybe they fly, they don't want to become afraid, right? But they know that there is a problem here. There, there, I mean, we definitely don't want to instill a sense of fear, without a doubt. I mean, I personally spend probably three quarters of my time in the air flying. And I do feel, and it is the safest mode of transportation. I feel much safer getting into an aircraft than I do getting into my car and driving somewhere. All we're talking about is there's never can be enough that you can do, right? So as new technology is developed, as new capability is developed, if it does enable enhanced safety, why not incorporate it? Because at, at the end of the day, none of that should ever be sacrificed in the name of safety to continue to improve our industry. Yep, absolutely. Thanks again, Jim, for joining me on the podcast today. Always an interesting conversation, especially this one. Thank you very much, and I welcome the opportunity to talk on a very important topic. I want to thank everyone out there for listening on this episode. Uh, there's a lot more information on runway safety on our website. If you check out aerospace.honeywell.com, you'll find a lot more information on runway safety. But thanks again for listening, and we'll catch you on the next episode of Aerospace Unplugged.